Right, this is the assess on page 116, 117. I think I'm doing three questions at the moment. Yes, just to finish off. Um, this is question two. Um, Sophie and Becky are running to keep fit. Well done, girls. Becky and Sophie go for a training run one night. Why? Um, describe their runs. Well, let's do Becky. She's really easy. She's running at a constant speed. I won't write this, but look. Lovely linear relationship. Absolutely maintaining a constant speed. Now, what about Sophie? Well, she runs at constant speed for about 15 minutes, and then she stops for half an hour, between 15 minutes and 25 minutes, and then carries on running at a constant speed. So I've told their stories to you on video. I'm not going to write it all down and waste a lot of time. Now, B, what does the graph show about Sophie between A and B? Well, between A and B, she's clearly stopped because time is going on, but the distance isn't increasing give a possible reason for this she needed to stop to rest for example just leave it like that it's entirely functional uh, understandable she maybe isn't as fit as Becky so don't write down she's not as fit as Becky write down she needed to stop to rest for half an hour simple as that right work out Sophie's average speed in miles per hour for the whole run right Sophie did this and she therefore did three miles so her distance is three miles And the time it took her to do those three miles is, right there, 45 minutes. Now, 45 minutes, you know, is three quarters of an hour. In other words, 0 0.75 hours. Now, speed, distance over time. The distance travelled is three miles. Now, look at this, divided by three quarters of an hour. It makes the math really, really easy. Look at this. Now remember when you divide by a fraction, you flip it the other way, um, go for reciprocal, and you multiply, yeah? So three divided by three quarters is like saying three times four thirds. And look at this. The threes cancel handsomely, and we're left with four miles per hour. Isn't that lovely? So Sophie's averaging four miles per hour in terms of her run. Not very fast. She's having a nice gentle trot building up her fitness. After all, she's not as fit as Becky. Um, I don't want to work out Becky's speed. It looks really awkward. But I'm going to stop there and move on to the next question. Right. This is, in fact, question three from the book. The graph shows the journey of a car as it accelerates and then slows down. So here we are. We're getting faster there. And that's pretty straight, it's constant speed, and then we're slowing down. Right then, calculate the average speed of the car for this journey and state your units. Fair enough. Same again, what's the distance? We have gone um, between 400 and 500, I see 5 squares, and I have therefore 5 squares divided by 100, each square is 20, so I make that 2 squares. 40. So it's 440 meters. And the time it took the car journey to do that 440 meters is, thankfully not too difficult, 20 seconds. Speed? Well, that's going to be the distance divided by the time. The distance is 440 meters. It took the car 20 seconds to do that. Choppy chop, cancelling down the tens. 44 divided by 2 is 22 now look at the units meters per second and that's good revision for your science as well all right speed equals distance over time 44 over 2 having simplified down a little 22 meters per second and the last question now i've chosen question five it's it's lovely look at that right the graph shows the path of a cricket ball through the air when it's been thrown what was the total distance thrown? Well, I've gone from 0 to not quite 80. Well, that's 70. Again, 72, 74, 78. Very, very clear scale for which I'm very grateful. So, total distance thrown, 78 meters. B. What was the maximum height reached by the ball? We're trying to find the peak here. So, oh, I don't know. It's about here somewhere, I'd say. It's getting a bit narrow. I'm going, I'm going to go for that one. So what have I got here? Let's try and label the scale. That's going to be 1, 
two, three, four, five. So I've got two meters is equivalent to five squares. So one square is going to be five, um, two divided by five, 0.4 meters. Let's see if I can judge that carefully. So 4.4, 4.8, 5.2. It's less than 5.2, so between 4.8, let's go for the maximum out there, 4.4, 4.8, now if that's 5.2 and that's, and that's 4.8, then I reckon that's going to be exactly 5 metres. So I'm going to go with 5 metres, reading off that very difficult scale. So it reached the height of 5 metres when it's being thrown. C. What horizontal distance had been travelled when the ball was at its highest. In other words, how far had it gone when it reached its highest point? If I read this down very carefully, I should be able to find it, shouldn't I? So from there to there, again, it's not a brilliant um, way to do it. Oops, I don't want that bit. So you go away. I'll oh, stay there then. So I'm going to do that. Read down, show the examiner what I'm doing. Right, what we've got here. So that's going to be 30, label it 30. 32, 34, I'm going for 34 meters when it reached its maximum height. Is that fair enough? Again, using this, it may be 35 if I drip perfectly straight, but I can't do it with this thing. So 34 meters is good enough. D, give a possible reason why the height of the ball started at two meters. Well, imagine an average height cricketer, say, I don't know, man size. And he's about to throw the ball like that. Look, his hand is raised, so that adds extra height to, um, you know, the ball before it gets thrown. So I'm going to say it is the height of the cricketer with his um, arm. Or hand raised before the ball is thrown. All right, that's what I'm going to go with. Okay, the height of the chap plus the the extra little bit above his head and um, before he throws the ball. And that's and that's it. And so goodbye section ten. Goodbye real life graphs. And we'll see you in chapter eleven very very soon.